beef and lamb prices are coming down now. We've already heard of sheep farmers culling their flocks to save costs due to a price mm. downturn. I think I heard stories last week of, of, of lamb selling for a dollar a head. Now, we're certainly not paying a dollar for a, a whole lamb's worth of meat in the supermarket, but Meat and Livestock Association is now reporting that the cost of cattle has dropped by up to 72%. And then you've got this El Nino on the horizon, um, uh, which the suggestion is farmers will be forced to take more drastic measures. And there are claims that water buybacks in the, the Murray-Darling Basin plan will lead to higher milk prices. I mean, if you are a farmer at the moment, how can you win? Well, it, look, it's always tough farming, of course, and some elements of what's happening here are, 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 are God-made, if you like. Uh, the, yes, there's an impending possibly drought with the El Nino being declared, and that has led to farmers offloading cattle and, and therefore causing a price decrease to some extent. But there are some man-made elements of, uh, of the, the, the frustrations that are facing our farmers right now. Number one, the government has announced that they're going to ban live sheep exports. There's no science behind this. Uh, uh, the animal welfare outcomes have improved considerably for, for farmers, but the government has taken this position because it's selling out to the Greens uh, and they have decided uh, to ban live sheep exports that principally affect Western Australia. But as we saw with the live cattle ban under Gillard's time, that affects all markets. And, and, and sheep prices, as you said, dollar ahead in Wagga Wagga the other week, a long way from live sheep markets, mm. but that extra, the, that extra amount of livestock on the market is causing prices to crash for all farmers. And then this week I'm out in the Murray Darling and the government has announced out of nowhere that they're going to buy more water water back from our farmers. And these are not really buybacks, these are buyouts of, mm -hmm. of farmers. They destroy regional communities, cost jobs in, in these towns. And for all of the, your viewers in the city, uh, they'll mean high prices. Because if of you course. allow farmers to use less water, they'll grow less food and they'll push the price of those food mm -hmm. items up and they're already skyrocketing our yeah. shops. I don't think people could afford more. Exactly. Now, the AEC have been in a bit of hot water this week, but um, they're using planes and helicopters and boats and all sorts to get to people in remote Aboriginal communities to encourage them to vote uh, in the referendum, and they're taking uh, interpreters and, and all sorts of stuff with them because Indigenous enrolment's the highest it's ever been at about 94%. But, you know, I understand that this will happen in any election or any referendum, that's fine. But I just can't help thinking the $400 million we're spending on the referendum, the money we're spending on these boats and helicopters and planes, imagine if we just actually spent that on practical help instead of trying to get people to vote in a referendum. Well, I think you're exactly right, Caleb. This has been a massive distraction for our country, uh, caused an enormous amount of division uh, and is not going to help Aboriginal people one way or another, whatever the result. It has been a huge, huge waste of, of your viewers' money, your taxpayer money has been wasted here on this. I mean, I, I'm very much an advocate if we're going to have constitutional referenda, uh, they should be placed alongside a general election, unless mm. there's a really good reason not to. The reason Anthony Albanese is doing this now is he doesn't want, didn't want a voice debate to distract from any re-election campaign he has to pursue in the next couple of years. So he's effectively spending $400 million of your money, which, as you say, could be used to actually help Aboriginal people. He's doing that to protect himself and make sure he doesn't have a, a, an election period that's, that's muddled with another issue. And I think that's grossly incompetent, a gross mismanagement of taxpayer money. And if we're going to have... The, the, the Prime Minister next wants a re referendum on the Republic as well. <laughs> I, I think that would be another waste of $400 million. <laughs> but for, for God's sake, if you're going to do it, just do it at the same time an election, and then at least we're not uh, spending more money uh, than we need to when we have to have an election anyway. Well, they did say that whether or not we have a referendum on, uh, on becoming a Republic would have something to do with whether this one gets up. So it may well be off the cards, Matt Canavan. Hands. <laughs> it's all right, Matt Canavan. Thank you for joining me tonight.